Okay. No, no, no. I want to just park. Oh, you, oh, you went parking. to dock. I want to dock uh, manually. Oh, did you do it automatically? Yeah. Yeah, I did. <laughs> uh, okay. It'll still be fine. It should go, actually. Yeah, it'll go. You'll succeed. Okay, super. Yep. And then can you undock it and then we'll watch this mm -hmm. watch this indicator? Yeah, you're back here. No, it says it's vacant again. Yep. Focus. Okay. And uh, do electronics design, software design, enclosure design, and then talk about the timeline, how long it takes to complete the project, uh, how many hours on the project, and then how much it costs. <coughs> Our project's primary goal is to create a system for enabling a scuttle to talk to on the go, maybe you want to do a mobile hotspot or whatever. Um, but for our project, we want to make sure that it works with Temu's network because it will be used for students here. All of that information is being communicated to the Cayenne IoT database where it's represented by that laptop there and we're displaying information such as the battery levels and the um, RFID status of the charging station. So this is our system functional block diagram. The top half represents the charging station and the bottom half represents what you see on board the scuttle. Um, the charging station is a little bit simple in design. Basically, we just need to take in power from the wall and supply enough power to our three charging pads that are on the front there, as well as the RFID reader and the BeagleBone Blue all housed inside. We'll take a look at the PCB and how that works here in a second. And then the scuttle onboard module below, same rough idea. We know we need to take in power from the receiver pads. We need to control that power using those relays. That's how we can check for charging and then obviously um, ensure that we don't overcharge the batteries. And then we need to supply that power through a LiPo connection um, to the Scuttle's battery pack, which is modified to have that LiPo connection on the bottom of it. And this is all controlled with one GPIO pin from the BeagleBone Blue through a low side switching fit. So our deliverables are the prototype charging station you see here, the prototype Scuttle onboard module you see here and just watched run around, uh, as well as all of our prototype Scuttle docking scripts and the Scuttle battery life and ID management GUI scripts that are in the charging station and on the Scuttle itself. Um, these are our initial functional requirements that we had. Um, we've met all of them, but we just displayed them in the demo. Um, and now we'll go into the design of the station, as well as the, the scuttle onboard module, and talk about um, how we solved the problems we ran into, um, as well as complete our project. So these, we did, uh, I didn't expect it to be as difficult as it was, but we do have this set up and we'll document it as well, how you can set up your script so that it runs whenever you plug in the station. So you just plug in the station, you don't even have to connect to it, it's already doing its thing. You don't have to run any code, it's already running, you're good to go. And it remembers its client ID through power cycle. It does, mm -hmm. through power cycles. Where is that stored? It's stored inside the file itself, on the, on the SD card. Okay. Okay, so this is our docking sequence flow chart. Um, whenever the script is started, it's going to ascertain the distance that it needs to get to the station, so it'll turn to find the station. Um, if it's too close or too far, it'll adjust um, to in order to get um, in front of the station. So whenever it is within a certain target heading, it's going to face the station. Uh, again, ascertain the distance, make sure it's not too close or too far, um, and then it's going to get in front of the station maintaining the target heading as it uh, gets closer to the station. When it's in front of the station, it's going to um, assess how far it is from the station and continue driving slowly forward un uh, and closing theta offset um, until it reaches the station. When it detects that it's there and the radius of the uh, target is large enough, it'll stop and then it's going to keep checking or it's going to check if its batteries are charging. If it's not, it's going to back up um, and then redock. And then once it's docked correctly, um, it's going to continually ascertain the battery levels. Uh, once the batteries are full, it's going to exit the script. So on a high level, until it docks successfully, it will continue to dock mm -hmm. to try dock. Right. Sorry, one thing mentioned here, theta offset is defined as the difference, David's familiar with this, but um, the data offset is defined as the difference, as the angle between the center of the scuttle's vision and the target in its vision. So if it can see the target in its peripheral over here, it wants to be sure to close that angle so that it's constantly facing it. And that's what you see when it drives forward, where it kind of wiggles its way, that's, mm -hmm. uh, that's what it's doing. Um, so that's that part, so I just wanted to define that part. Uh, this is the charging station enclosure design. Um, as you can tell, 
And as you've seen before the demo, um, these pads are spaced out um, to match the receiver pads on the onboard module. Um, this is the back panel right here. Uh, you can see where we've mounted both uh, the BeagleBone Blue and the Charging Station PCB. Um, and the distances um, from the side panel uh, where those are at, those are conveniently placed so they can easily be plugged into both receiver pads uh, as far as PCB goes and the RFID reader for the uh, BeagleBone Blue. Uh, so this is the uh, mounting design for the onboard module. Uh, after a lot of conversations and different iterations, the main thing is that we wanted to make sure that this PCB fit conveniently on within the Scuttle's existing architecture. So we have it snapped to this rear, the rear side of this front rail here, which provides very easy connections to the BeagleBone Blue and to the uh, battery pack as well. But additionally, it allows us to plug in these uh, the wireless receiver pads that are on the front. Their cord comes underneath and can easily plug into the back of the uh, PCB there. The panel on the front, let me turn it around so you can see. The panel on the front, as you see in the image, is designed to hold the, um, and it, you can't see it because it's covered up, but there are lines here on the, etched on this acrylic, which define where you need to place your receiver pads so that they line up with the station. Um, and then it also has a spot for your RFID tag as well, whatever RFID tag you may be using to identify that scuttle. Um, and so that's how our, our mounting process takes place. Oh, sorry, also, this front panel, I don't really want to take it off right now, but the front panel can slide off easily with these clips on the side right here that you see. So you can just slide it on and off, and so you're either ready to wirelessly charge or not however you want to go. So I don't see any screws or snaps. How is the printed circuit board mounted to that rail? Oh, sorry, you don't see it. Um, <coughs> if you look behind set up our libraries and begin connecting to Cayenne using its unique client ID, um, then first starting start scanning for an RFID tag. There is an RFID tag. Um, we then compare that scan RFID tag to our list of Scuttle IDs. If it's recognized, we want to match our status to that RFID tag. Um, if, the, uh, if the tag is not recognized, we want to add a new widget and add it to our list of recognized IDs and then update the status accordingly. Um, if there is no RFID tag, we set our status to vacant and we only update our status upon a status change. How do you set up the unique ID? The unique ID. Yes. Charging station. Um, it, connects, it connects. Oh, connect to Cayenne using, using client ID. Yes. How do you set that up? So you would set that up um, whenever you create your account in Cayenne. Um, you add a new device, and when you add a new device, Cayenne will give you that client ID. Um, you then go into your code, and you have to copy paste that client ID into the code and um, in our L1 Cayenne um, script that we've created. And is that process documented in? It is. It'll be in the user manual, and I've already, I've already started on it. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Vision with our customer and what he expects to see from the project and what he wants to see from the autonomous docking part, as well as for the charging station itself. Additionally, we wanted to make sure that this platform was easy to use and move around, so the charging station is pretty simple. You can lift this thing up with one hand, no problem, um, and don't lose your monkey. It's very important. Um, <laughs> And also we wanted to make sure that the scuttle can be modularly equipped with the onboard components so that the student can just uh, attach the parts, uh, assuming they're already made for them, they can just attach the equipment, power up the charging station, run the code, good to go. Um, so that's where those performance specs came Is from. Is monkey included in the delivery? Unfortunately not. Um, he, uh, he's very crucial and I don't think we can leave him behind. Um, so that was the schematic for the charging station PCB. It's very simple. Once again, we're just taking in power from a barrel jack through the wall here, as you see here. Um, and then supplying that through USB connections to the BeagleBone Blue and our three um, wireless base charging pads. The important thing is that this uh, circuit board is designed to have enough um, traces that are big enough. It's actually just two large planes so that current can flow very easily. We know that these charging pads individually can take about ooh, two amps each at most. Um, so we need to be able to supply at least six amps to those guys as well and obviously still power the BeagleBone Blue. And then looking to the uh, schematic for the onboard module here, and I'll bring this into view so you can see it. Um, it's mounted on the back right here. This, uh, this schematic was designed so that we can um, very easily and, simp and simply um, provide power from the receiver pads to the battery pack as well as control it using the scuttle. So this schematic flows from the top down. You have power coming into the top, managed by the relays here in the center, controlled by a GPIO uh, low side switching FET. The GPIO pin comes in from the BeagleBone Blue, and then your LiPo connection to supply power to the batteries. The design of the PCB was mostly governed by we knew we needed it to fit on the front rail of the charging of the scuttle robot itself. So its dimensions are designed so that it fits snugly underneath here, so it's about even with the surface of this. 
and can be in the back side of it, which is not shown. The back side of it has clear spots for mounting the little clips, which are what actually hold it onto the front rail. Um, and then again, the micro USBs were intentionally placed, spaced out far apart along the bottom of the pad so that the receiver pads on the front can snap in on the underside and your GPIO pin is very prominently located so that you can very easily plug in from the BeagleBone Blue and your LiPo connection, again, very easily accessible and closest to the battery pack so you can have minimal wires crossing over everything. So going into the flow chart for a charging station, um, uh, can you it? Yeah, so this is our number two. Let's just go. Two lights up, uh -huh. it's no longer vacant. Go ahead and throw on so number one, which is the blue one. Yeah. So this this is scuttle one. Yeah, so scuttle number one lights up. It's no longer vacant. All right, and show them with the new tag. We got a new student comes into class. Unrecognized tag. It hasn't been registered yet. And I'll throw you a new widget. So then from there you can access your new widget. If it'll let me. And uh, go into the settings. You can name it whatever you want. I will name it skull number three. Number three, and you can change it to whichever, um, I'm sorry, whichever icon you would like. And I always prefer, if I can find it, the bolt. So there you go. So now if he ever scans it again. Oh, sorry. Can you scan number three again? Yeah. yeah. It is always congruent and will always update to that widget. Super.